and you're all set for a day on the lake. But maybe your boat won't start, or maybe your engine overheats. Well, don't get too heated just yet. We're here to share with you our knowledge on these two common issues and how to troubleshoot them. Hi, I'm Timmy McNamee, professional wake surfer, water sports coach, and technician for Lens Cove Marina and Lens Cove's Lessons in Boating. This video is all about helping you troubleshoot common tow boat problems in hopes to save your day on the water. In today's video, we will cover what to do if your boat won't start and what to do if your engine overheats. There are a few things you can check if you're having the issue of your boat not starting. Number one, and it's pretty straightforward, make sure that battery switch is in the on position for starters if you are already out running your boat and you decided that you want to take a break chill with your friends listen to some music and just hang out on the boat and suddenly the music shuts off or your boat won't start again odds are that you drained your first battery and you can easily turn it to that second battery switch so that it'll start your boat back up for you number two Check the battery connections themselves. Sometimes they just wiggle loose and you have to take a wrench and tighten them back up again. Number three, make sure your safety switch is actually intact on the safety because sometimes it falls off too. Number four, sometimes I'm guilty of this myself, but if I came in to dock the boat or I moored my boat, I accidentally left my boat in gear, the boat's not gonna start unless that throttle is in neutral. So make sure your throttle's in neutral as well. A little bit more of a scarier issue your engine overheats. And I know it's super intimidating because there's this massive alarm that sounds like 007 going off in your boat, but don't stress out. Simply put the boat in neutral and shut the boat off and wait a few moments and there's a few things that you can check. First things first, locate the filter and the strainer in your boat and make sure that there's no weeds actually stuck in it. Oftentimes, boats that especially are docked at a dock with a lot of weeds around them can suck up weeds into the strainer and this will result in a plug strainer and therefore less water going into your engine and ultimately overheating. It's important that when you go in to check that strainer for weeds, you make sure that your shutoff valves on the engine hoses are shut off. The second thing you can check if your engine overheats are the actual coolant hoses on the engine. Sometimes the hose clamps come loose and one of the hoses or both can pop off, resulting in the water not getting through the engine. So just make sure they're still intact. And the third thing that might be happening if your engine's overheating, and this is actually becoming more of a common issue in the industry right now with wake surf boats. If you have your ballast loaded and you're out enjoying some time surfing with your friends and your engine overheats, odds are you're probably slowing down a little bit too quickly as the water from the wave is actually rushing up into the transom underneath the back compartments of the boat. What this means is that the water is actually accumulating in your engine bay. So when you get back to drive, when you're towing your surfer and your boat is angled, all the water that's come in under your seats is in the back of the engine. Because of the location of the belts on the engine, the belt starts to slip in the water. And because the belt's slipping, it can't keep up, causing the engine to overheat. If you want to avoid this problem, just slow down a little bit slower when your surfer falls or try slowing down and slowly turning to one side or the other so that that wave water doesn't rush up in the back of your boat. Before you run your boat again, just settle it for a little bit and let the bilge pump some of that water out before you get going again. I would say on average five to 10 minutes so that you have less water in your engine bay that won't affect the belt slipping. So just shut the boat down, turn that bilge switch on and just listen and make sure it's pumping out the water like it should. If you've gone through each of these troubleshooting steps and you're still experiencing some issues, it's really important to get on the phone and let your dealership know. If you own a newer tow boat, it could still be under your manufacturer warranty. Let the dealership do the diagnostic and the work in case it's covered under warranty. We all know that troubles with your tow boat can be a real damper on your day, but here's hoping one of our troubleshooting steps helped resolve your issues today. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for watching Lens Cove Lessons in Boating.